Joining me now is Peter Sprigg with the Family Research Council. Peter, first off, your response to these stories. Certainly, there is an agenda behind both of these stories, and that agenda is to uh, deconstruct the reality that uh, that human beings are born male and female, uh, that we are created that way at the outset, and that those are immutable characteristics. Uh, but this is really the climax of a, a, a series of sort of waves of attacks upon uh, upon the reality of the sexes, uh, uh, upon uh, gender roles through the through the radical feminist movement, upon sexual roles through the homosexual movement, and now upon the reality of our sexual identity itself uh, through the transgender movement. How should Christians respond? Well. Uh, Christians need to understand that God does not make mistakes in terms of how he created us, uh, that our biological makeup uh, is, uh, is the, most <laughs> the most realistic indicator of whether we are male or female, and that in the vast majority of people, uh, all of the indicators of biological sex are unambiguous at birth. We do not have a right to try to change uh, the sex that we, uh, that we had from, from the moment of our birth. Regarding the gender neutrality, why does gender identity matter? Well, in a sense, I think uh, it, it doesn't matter. I, I think we should uh, accept that we are uh, the biological sex that we were born with and, and function within that kind of context. Uh, what this represents is an effort to say, no, no, our, um, uh, our sex is not determined by nature or, or uh, our gender is not determined by uh, nature, it is something that can be self-created. Uh, and in fact, we can be whatever we choose to be. There are, uh, of course, there are a lot of possibilities of what people can become, uh, but changing their sex is not one of them. Why do you think Scholastic decided to, decided to write this book? And is it something a third grader can even begin to understand? This is what I think is very troubling, uh, is that this is only going to create confusion in the minds of young people who might uh, read a book like this or be exposed to this kind of agenda, particularly young elementary school age children. It's challenging enough for normal children to uh, uh, navigate and come to terms with uh, their gender identity, what it means to be male or female, to uh, come to terms with their sexuality in terms of their body and uh, how, how it differs from the other sex and how it may change as they approach puberty and so forth. Um, and uh, this is only going, things like this are only going to create greater confusion, add greater confusion onto the struggles that even in the ordinary course of, of things uh, most children will have. Um, and for those who, first of all, a lot of children, most children may not ever be exposed to someone who, who is transgender because this is a very tiny percentage of the population. Uh, it may plant ideas, though, in the minds of those who, who are struggling in some way. A and this is completely unnecessary because what the research shows is, first of all, most children who struggle with gender identity issues actually have those issues resolved before adulthood and do not change change their gender identity from, from their biological sex at birth. The other thing is that those who do have a very um, uh, deep-rooted struggle can be treated in childhood in a way that will help them overcome those gender identity issues. Uh, simply affirming them as being the opposite of their biological sex is not the only solution, not even the most compassionate solution for them. How can we turn the tide of this culture war? Uh, I think we have to, uh, first we have to speak out, we have to be bold and uh, speak the truth even uh, when it costs us, even when it costs us the uh, approval and affirmation of the more liberal dominated institutions in our society, such as the, the schools, uh, maybe the teachers, the principal, uh, and particularly our colleges and universities. Uh, we have to affirm uh, natural law, the reality that, that there are givens of nature, which we as Christians believe are, are, uh, are gifts of God, uh, which are immutable and cannot be changed. 
being on the front lines, what are you seeing happen that might encourage believers in Christ? Uh, well, I mean, we are seeing people, um, uh, people stand up and uh, face the reality, and particularly uh, in the wake of the Supreme Court's decision uh, on uh, redefining marriage, uh, we're seeing a lot of uh, Christians com coming under threat. We're seeing religious liberty coming under threat, but we're also seeing uh, Christians uh, unite and, uh, and stand up to try to defend their religious liberty, uh, defend the truth uh, of natural law and of, of divine revelation as, as God has given it to us. Peter Sprigg from the Family Research Council, thanks for your time. Thank you.